tonight on NJ Spotlight News. Impeachment inquiry. House Republicans launch a corruption investigation into President Biden. Two out of three New Jersey Republicans have signed on. Jersey Democrats say not so fast. Impeachment talk is a sign of weakness and desperation. This is pure chaos at this time. Also, offshore, off limits. State GOP members demand a moratorium on all offshore wind production, calling for a freeze on subsidies. Everybody wants a cleaner environment, but I think we're going too fast, too much, and we don't know what the cost is ultimately going to be. Plus, they don't work. An FDA bombshell finding a popular ingredient in most over-the-counter decongestant and allergy medicines does nothing to relieve your runny nose. It is a safe product. Um, the issue is its efficacy. And a place to call home. After two years of development, Jersey City celebrates the opening of a 60,000 square foot shelter. May these new residences be filled with the warmth of love, the comfort of security, and the hope of a brighter tomorrow. NJ Spotlight News begins right now. Funding for NJ Spotlight News is provided by NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of residents and businesses for more than 100 years. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association, and by the PSEG Foundation. From NJPBS, this is NJ Spotlight News with Brianna Venosi. Good evening and thanks for joining us this Wednesday night. I'm Brianna Venosi. We begin with another clash on Capitol Hill. U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is ordering Republicans to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden, alleging a culture of corruption involving the president and his family, accusing him of profiting from his son Hunter Biden's business dealings while he was vice president in the Obama administration. Speaker McCarthy has been signaling an inquiry was coming for weeks, but the Tuesday announcement comes as he faces increasing pressure from the conservative wing of the party, who are threatening to oust him if he doesn't follow through on Biden's impeachment. The White House has denied any wrongdoing, and an investigation into the issue found no evidence. But it sets the stage for an even more tumultuous presidential election in 2024. Out of New Jersey's three House Republicans, two, Representatives Chris Smith and Jeff Van Drew, are fully backing the impeachment effort. Meanwhile, House Democrats in New Jersey are fuming over the announcement. Veteran Congressman Bill Pascrell said it shows the GOP doesn't, quote, give a damn about the American people. And he joins me now. Congressman Pascrell, uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, you, like many of your fellow Democrats, have called this inquiry baseless. Uh, what's going on right now in Washington, D.C.? Not much, because they can't even get enough votes for regular legislation. And, uh, and, and impeachment, <laughs> and impeachment talk is a sign of weakness and desperation. This is pure chaos at this time. They can't even pass a defense appropriations bill. Get that. The party is doubling down on conspiracy theories. Where does this go from here? I mean, uh, what evidence is there at this point uh, to warrant an investigation um, from where you stand? There is a dead end. They have no evidence. They admit it. Republican leadership is going on the air on one one of the tubes and saying we don't have any evidence yet, but maybe we'll get some. They've been looking at this for seven months. Who the hell are they kidding? This is a total disgrace. What do you make of the speaker's decision uh, not to take this inquiry to a floor vote? Um, obviously, presumably, the votes wouldn't have been there. Well, they didn't do too good. <laughs> Republicans did not do very well when they were trying to recount after the election, after it had been decided that Joe Biden did win legitimately. 60 judges 
said, no, you're wrong, Republicans. You do not have any evidence that there was any kind of mass corruption. You and I want democracy. And Americans should want democracy. It's not something that is given. It is not something that falls out of the sky. It is earned. So now McCarthy has to save his fanny. He's got to save his job. So he'll tell them anything. He'll do anything. And that's very sad, Brianna, very sad. We know this is inevitably going to affect the 2024 race, is it not? Yes, you're absolutely right. The question is, this didn't just start with Donald Trump. This started before he was the president of the United States. When we took authority and power away from the members of Congress, we were heading towards an authoritarian branch of government. As Washington said, it, this needs to be protected. It's a sanctimonious kind of thing. If you don't have it in your heart, what did you come to Congress for? Why? We had to do what we had to do because there was evidence in the former president's case. There is no evidence here. Whatever anybody did in his family, Mr. Biden, they'll have to pay for it. They'll have to defend themselves. But don't accuse this as an act of vengeance. I mean, there's no question that the inmates are running the asylum. Take a look for yourself. Don't, Democrats and Republicans, has nothing to do with party affiliation. This has to do with the people who are running the asylum right now. Congressman Bill Pascrell, certainly speaking up now. Congressman, thanks so much for your time and your thoughts today. Brianna, it's always an honor to talk with you. God bless America. Meanwhile, New Jersey political circles are being engulfed in the highly charged issue of offshore wind development. Senate Republicans are calling on the legislature to get back to Trenton to pump the brakes on all development. The opposition, though, doesn't end there. It's spilling over into criticism of Governor Murphy's new pick to head the BPU. She's a longtime ally who helped create the administration's clean energy plan. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan has the latest. If you don't move, then you're going to get arrested. Ocean City Police did arrest half a dozen folks after they staged a sit-in to delay construction of an underground power cable that would connect to offshore wind turbines. Orsted's wind farm projects designed to generate clean energy and combat climate change, but that's not how these protesters see it. We're just here trying to stop Orsted, trying to save our ocean, trying to save our beaches and our community. It's a crusade that's evolved beyond protests. Groups like Protect Our Coast New Jersey have filed multiple lawsuits to block Orsted's ocean wind project, fueled by funding from widespread contributions. You don't destroy the environment in order to save it. There are better ways, and there have to be better ways to go about this to solve the problem of climate change. Everybody wants a cleaner environment, but I think we're going too fast, too much, and we don't know what the cost is ultimately going to be uh, to the taxpayers. Senator Anthony Bucco says Republicans sent a letter asking Democratic leadership to call a special legislative session on the issue. They opposed signing over an estimated billion dollars in federal tax credits to Orsted and disapprove of Murphy's appointment to succeed the late Joe Fiordaliso as head of Jersey's Board of Public Utilities, Christine Gul Sadovi. She helped craft the governor's energy master plan. I would have liked to have seen somebody uh, chair the agency that was a little more balanced, that, you know, was able to hear both sides of the argument and, and make a decision. Um, I don't think we're getting that. I think we're getting a rubber stamp for the Murphy administration. I think, unfortunately, these, these attacks against Christine are, are partisan in, in nature. Environmental advocates who support Governor Murphy's goal of 100% clean electricity by 2035 back his new BPU boss, but admit they've lost some edge in the political narrative. Over the course of you know this year, we've seen some of the poll numbers diverge a little bit and have a more partisan distinction. The majority of New Jersey, New Jersey residents still support offshore wind. The advocates and, and particularly the Democrats were just caught flat footed and not really understanding how quickly these things can change and how the partisan tribalism that, that's driving our politics today 
is going to take over almost every issue. Monmouth Poll Director Patrick Murray says surveys show public support for wind energies eroded from 84% in 2011 to just 54% this August, down 30 points. It's tanked among Republicans. It's happening across the country. And, and you can basically track the money. This is coming from sources that actually wanted to drill off the coasts. Uh, but it became part of the Republican orthodoxy uh, to be against uh, wind energy, renewable energy. Orsted, an underwriter of NJ Spotlight News, is also facing financial headwinds. It recently extended its Jersey project schedule by a year to 2026, pleading kinks in the supply chain and high interest rates. Today's milestone, NOAA Fisheries gave Ocean Wind One a permit for underwater construction. As long as Orsted follows rules designed to mitigate harmful impacts on 16 species of marine mammals, especially North Atlantic right whales. The company commented Orsted prioritizes coexistence with our local communities, marine wildlife, and ocean neighbors. This permit strictly prohibits Ocean Wind One from seriously injuring or causing the death of any marine mammal. Regardless, protests will undoubtedly continue. I'm Brenda Flanagan and J Spotlight News. Well, those aren't the only controversies within the Murphy administration's clean energy goals. The state's proposal to ban the sale of all gas-powered vehicles by 2035 should be abandoned, according to about 100 business groups across New Jersey. The coalition sent a letter Tuesday to top Democratic legislative leaders asking them to help stop Governor Murphy's plan. The New Jersey Business Coalition argues the proposal is both impractical and misguided, saying it would put a big financial burden on families due to the higher cost of electric vehicles and the lack of infrastructure to charge them. In the letter, the group, which is led by the NJBIA, says it supports the Murphy administration's efforts to reduce carbon emissions, but believes the state isn't ready. The timeline is too short. It's just 12 years from now. The New Jersey Coalition of Automotive Retailers, which goes by NJ Carr, has also supported the state's clean air rules, but is among the many groups that have come out against the proposal. Uh, the reason why we felt it was necessary to sign on to this letter uh, isn't because we deny climate change, isn't because we think that we don't have to act. We have acted aggressively and put money where our, these mandates are. Uh, the reason why we signed the letter is because we think that the Murphy administration has essentially made perfect the enemy of good uh, through uh, this regulatory proposal. Well, new questions are circulating around a law meant to protect judicial public servants by shielding their home addresses. It was born out of tragedy, the brutal murder of U.S. District Court Judge Esther Salas's son at their home in 2020. But as Ted Goldberg reports, the law's full range of implications are still being sorted out, including whether it interferes with the First Amendment freedom of speech. Not only the life that was lost, but the lives of so many that can and will be lost, can and will be lost, if we don't treat judicial security, privacy, and uh, with the attention and the respect and the caution that it deserves. District Court Judge Esther Salas is the driving force behind Daniel's Law. It gives legal protection to the personal information of active or retired judges, prosecutors, or people in law enforcement. Three years ago, a lawyer angry about one of Salas' rulings showed up to her North Brunswick home, shot her husband, and killed her son, Daniel. This gentleman, uh, because of open source information, was able to track my every move. He knew my church, he knew my husband's office, he had a list of Daniel's baseball games. It is sad and unfortunate that this network came to be because Daniel was lost. But if we prevent one tragedy like this from happening in the future, we've done something worthwhile. Prominent legal figures from around the state gathered to talk about Daniel's law at Stockton University yesterday and described how New Jersey's team of redactors pulls information from public facing websites. If you have moved and you've got a deed out there that shows you live in a new house now, that may be discoverable. We can help to uh, block that. We can help to redact that residence information for you. About 8,000 people in the legal and law enforcement communities have signed up to protect their personal information out of 15,000 people who are eligible. 
Retired assignment judge Julio Mendez served as a moderator and said Daniel's Law is a good start to fix a massive concern. The internet is a cesspool and the dark web is constantly re, you know, gathering additional information. So it's almost impossible to keep up. But for some, Daniel's Law raises a larger First Amendment question. Does blocking addresses of certain people interfere with the freedom of speech? The discussion came one day after State Attorney General Matt Placken declined to get involved in a case where a journalist allegedly published the address of North Brunswick's police director. Transparency and accountability are lofty goals and good ones, but um, risking people's safety in their own homes, let alone their courtrooms or walking to their cars at night, is not the price that we should be paying for it. I'm all for, you know, First Amendment rights of speaking and protesting, but do it at the courthouse. Um, and, and I'm all for appealing if, if indeed there's a ruling that I may, may have erred on. Without Daniel's law, Judge Salas worries about the safety of other judges and what that means for American democracy. I think it is vital for democracy. I think we need to protect our judiciary. We need to send a strong message to would-be attackers that in, in America we do not tolerate this type of intimidation. We only need to look to history, Nazi Germany, Hungary, Venezuela, the toppling of democracies that they probably never saw coming. A similar bill protecting federal judges was signed into law last year by President Joe Biden. But it doesn't protect the 30,000 or so judges at the state or local level. That might have to be addressed state by state, with New Jersey's Daniels Law possibly serving as an example for others. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Ted Goldberg. The Food and Drug Administration dropped a bombshell on millions of Americans Tuesday. After extensive research, the government experts said they found the most popular over-the-counter nasal decongestants have a major flaw. They don't work. And the medication is no better than a dummy pill. Well, it turns out the main ingredient, phenylephrine, used in products like Sudafed, Allegra, Dayquil, and even Benadryl allergy, is ineffective in tablet form. It does nothing to relieve your stuffy nose. Now, doctors have questioned the drug's efficacy for years, and Tuesday's announcement, it's expected to disrupt the billion-dollar market for cold and allergy sufferers. Pharmacist Brian Pinto joins me now to explain. Brian, I think this just came to a shock. Uh, as a shock to all of us, um, especially because this was a unanimous vote from this advisory panel for the FDA. Well, it had been on the horizon for a little bit. Um, and those of us that are in practice, it's actually something that we had discussed or had seen through some of the um, peer reviewed journals as early as 2007. So, so not necessarily a surprise, but you know, phenylephrine in terms of its usage um, really only came about because of pseudofedrin, which was its precursor in a lot of these cough and cold products, having been not necessarily pulled, but um, restricted to where it was only available behind the pharmacy counter because of illicit use of uh, pseudofedrin, um, the chemical itself, in, and it's used for uh, crystal meth and other illicit drugs. Right. So I'm curious, though, why it took the FDA so long to come to this conclusion. That uh, change was made back in the early 2000s. So we're talking about, uh, you know, quite a few years ago. Correct, as to, as to why it took so long, possibly it was, uh, you know, who, who knows what the, what the background behind it. But, you know, at this point with regards to the over-the-counter uh, products, there's not really many alternatives when it comes to an oral uh, pill that you're going to have in a lot of these multi-symptom uh, decongestant or antihistamine products. So, you know, with pseudofedrin um, just being restricted and most companies wanting to have as much access to, to patients as possible, whether that be in a supermarket setting or outside of the pharmacy setting, um, phenylephrine was, was the best option that was out there. Depending on if you're looking for decongestant, Sudafed itself in its original form, Sudafedrin, is still available. And I will correct one of the things 
things you mentioned in your intro, products like Allegra D, Claritin D, and Zyrtec D, your former antihistamines that were prescription that have now gone over the counter, the ones that are combined with a decongestant do have pseudoephedrine as the uh, decongestant in those. So those won't be affected, but your more common Tylenol cold and sinus or multi-symptom products that, that are out on the market, those would be the ones that would be most affected. Brian Pinto, pharmacist, uh, thank you so much for giving us a little more insight on this. Thank you, happy to help. In our Spotlight on Business report, supply chain and labor shortages are being blamed for all the recent disruptions to the New Jersey River Line. For weeks now, passengers have had to deal with service interruptions. According to New Jersey Transit, the rail service is temporarily operating on a Sunday holiday schedule, which means trains come every 30 minutes. The light rail runs from Trenton to Camden with stops in 21 towns along the Delaware River and carries about 3 million passengers a year. It's one of the few mass transit options for that area of the state, but it's privately operated and New Jersey Transit says most of the problems are related to operator availability and getting vehicle parts to maintain and fix those one of a kind rail cars. The area's assemblyman Troy Singleton yesterday in a statement called the interruptions to riders shameful. On Wall Street, investors are still digesting the latest inflation data out today, showing consumer prices rose 3.7 percent in August compared to a year earlier, marking another month of inflation spikes. It's a sign that the Fed's battle to tame rising prices may not be over. Here's how the markets closed. Support for the Business Report provided by Junior Achievement of New Jersey. Providing students with skills and knowledge to explore, choose, and advance their career paths for a brighter future. Online at janj.org. Finally tonight, Jersey City leaders are trying to help wealth and poverty coexist, an increasing problem in the ever-changing city, by redeveloping a neighborhood that sits next to the Holland Tunnel and bringing long-needed services to the residents who need them. Senior political correspondent David Cruz has the story. For a lot of local residents in this part of Jersey City, St. Lucie's Church has been the mainstay of this long ignored but suddenly real estate hot neighborhood near the Holland Tunnel. The church was a spiritual home for this poor and working class neighborhood since the 1890s, closing in 1986. Soon though, this neighborhood landmark will look like this. Only its facade remaining as the base of a new 400 plus unit luxury high rise. I guess it's the, uh, it reminds me of the changing needs uh, a particular community faces and the consistent response in finding somehow a spiritual meaning, a spiritual quest. In this community, that quest has been serving the city's homeless population through St. Lucie's emergency shelter down the block. Today, with signs of a rapidly changing neighborhood all around, Cardinal Joe Tobin, Mayor Steve Fulop and officials from Catholic Charities cut the ribbon on the next phase of that mission, a new St. Lucie shelter. It is very challenging for government or the public sector to build resources like this with our own dollars. And we need to be creative to find solutions and creative solutions sometimes are politically tough. And so it's been a very, very long road with a lot of partners in order to achieve this. And compromise, including zoning variances, that allowed the developer to build a 23-story structure atop a historic landmark. The benefit for the city, say officials, is a new facility that will have a greater impact. We're actually uh, increasing the size of 20% here. It's going from 120 women and men to 150 here at St. Lucie's. And then, and then on a the top floor, we have 15 affordable housing, permanent housing for, uh, for homeless individuals. Plus, more room for social services, including mental health, substance abuse, and more. Tony Brookins spoke here today. Homeless after losing her job in the early days of the pandemic, she found shelter and support at the old St. Lucie's. Now, she's a volunteer here 
at the new shelter. I was glad to, to have a place where I was able to feel safe and, you know, connect with the people. And I, and I, and I used my volunteer services to make me feel, if that makes me feel comfortable. That's right. just me. <laughs> the new shelter will be right across the street from the luxury tower. And as this community further gentrifies, its residents will serve as a reminder of the extremes in this city, luxury housing, high in the sky with amenities like rooftop swimming pools and courtyards just across the street from an emergency shelter where the amenities include clean bathrooms, warm beds, and some affordable studio apartments. I'm David Cruz, NJ Spotlight News. That's going to do it for us tonight, but make sure you tune into the season premiere of Chatbox tomorrow night with David Cruz. David sits down with Governor Murphy about the fallout from the Department of Justice report on New Jersey's veterans' homes, parental rights, the upcoming legislative races, and more. Plus, he'll take your questions. You can watch it Thursday at 6 p.m. on the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel. And a reminder to download the NJ Spotlight News podcast so you can listen anytime time. I'm Brianna Venosi for the entire NJ Spotlight News team. Thanks for being with us. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. And Orsted, committed to the creation of a new, long-term, sustainable, clean energy future for New Jersey. Life is unpredictable. Health insurance shouldn't be. For over 90 years, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey has provided quality, affordable health plans to New Jersey residents. We have served generations of New Jersey families and businesses and are committed to driving innovations that put you at the heart of everything we do. Our members are our neighbors, our friends, and our families. We're here when you need us most. Horizon, proud to be New Jersey.